Okay, in this video, we're going to look at the Meselson and Stahl experiment. Now, these scientists were able to show that DNA replication was semi-conservative. So we're going to go through their investigation in case any application questions come up using their experiment to test you on your knowledge of the structure of DNA and how DNA replicates. So let's make a start so this experiment we kind of need to understand some basics to fully understand it so Meselson and Stahl designed their experiment with three facts in mind all bases in dna contain nitrogen right adenine thymine guanine and which one haven't i said cytosine uh, they are nitrogenous bases so there is nitrogen in those bases and nitrogen has two forms or two different isotopes. So N14, which we can call light nitrogen, so the mass number is 14, and N15, which we can call heavy nitrogen, uh, because the mass number is 15. And this is because they have the same number of protons, but different numbers of neutrons. So their mass number ends up being different. Okay, what was the third fact? Now, if you put nitrogen into a bacterium's growth medium, it will incorporate it into its DNA. So it will be using the nitrogen in its growth medium to make the bases, to make the DNA nucleotides. So whatever nitrogen it's provided with, whether that's the heavier or the lighter isotope of nitrogen, it will incorporate that into the bases in its DNA. So they theorize that growing bacteria on a medium containing N14 or light nitrogen would cause those bacteria to have lighter DNA than bacteria growing in a medium containing N15. So you can see that they used E. coli. Here we've got E. coli that have been growing in a medium containing heavy nitrogen. So their DNA will be made with nucleotides with bases containing N15 or heavy nitrogen. And then growing E. coli in a medium that contains N14, they'll incorporate N14 into their DNA, into their bases, and so their DNA will contain N14 or light nitrogen. So that's kind of the basics behind this investigation. Now, in terms of the actual experiment that they did, Meselson and Stahl grew huge populations of Escherichia, Escherichia coli or E. coli on N15 growth medium, so starting with a single cell. That cell will obviously then replicate using binary fission. And every time it does that, it needs to replicate its DNA. It's got N15 available to it. So it's using N15 to make the bases and to replicate the DNA. So all of the DNA in these bacteria will be heavy DNA or DNA that contain, contains N15 in its bases. Then what did they do? They used a centrifuge. So after growing the population of E. coli in N15, they extracted the DNA. They put the DNA extract into a solution and they spun it in a centrifuge. Now, we've talked about the centrifuge before when we did um, ultra centrifugation to separate out organelles. And we know that it spins really, really fast and it can separate out organelles or DNA based on density, differences in density. Now, after centrifugation, the heavy DNA, because the DNA contained N15, when they centrifuged it, it's got a heavier mass or a greater mass. So the DNA separated out as a band quite low down the centrifuge tube. If the bacteria was grown on N14, where do you think the band would appear? Well, if they'd been using N14 to make their bases and their DNA, the DNA would all contain N14. N14 is lighter or less dense, so we would expect when centrifuged that the DNA band would appear higher up the tube. Now, you don't have to draw it in a specific place. It just has to be a higher band because you're showing the examiner that you know the DNA will be less dense because it contains N14 or lighter nitrogen. Now, we still haven't really proven that DNA replication is semi-conservative. So let's go ahead and look at the next steps of their investigation. The bacteria that had been growing in N15 was then transferred to a different growth medium that contained N14 or lighter nitrogen. So now any new DNA that they produce during replication, 
they will be incorporating N14 or lighter nitrogen into the bases and into that new DNA. After being transferred to N14, the bacteria were allowed to replicate their DNA once. Where do you think the band would appear if the DNA in these bacteria was then extracted and centrifuged? Well, what we need to remember, if they've been growing in N15, or heavy nitrogen, the DNA would be denser, and when centrifuged, it would form a band lower down the tube. If they'd been growing in N14, and the DNA contained lighter nitrogen, when extracted and centrifuged, the DNA band would be higher up the tube because it would be less dense. Now, these bacteria were growing in N15, but now have been allowed to replicate once in N14. So the band would appear in the middle, and it was proved that DNA replication was semi-conservative because the DNA band was not purely heavy and low down. It was not purely light and high up. It appeared in the middle after centrifugation because this DNA will contain both N15 and N14. So it would have what we describe as intermediate density. Now I'm just gonna show you this in my own diagram. So I'm gonna use, in fact, I'm gonna use purple for N15. Let me change my pen color because we've used purple on the original diagrams, haven't we? So it had been growing in N15. So all of its DNA contained N15 in its bases. And we know N15 is heavier nitrogen. And if all of the DNA contained N15, we'd know it would form a band low down in the centrifuge tube due to its higher density. But it had been growing in N15, then they transferred it to a growth medium containing N14, and they allowed it to replicate once. So when DNA replicates, remember the hydrogen bonds uh, break, the two strands are separated, they both act as templates. So let's show the double helix being separated, the two strands both acting as templates. But now the bacteria is growing in a medium containing N14, so it's going to be using N14 to synthesize these new DNA strands. So hopefully you can see that the DNA produced contains one original strand, which had been made using N15, and one new strand or newly synthesized strand, which had been made using N14. So because you've got one strand containing heavier nitrogen and one strand containing lighter nitrogen, the DNA has this intermediate density. It's less dense than DNA containing just N15, but it's more dense than DNA containing just N14. So the band would appear in the middle. And this is how they went about proving that DNA replication is semi-conservative where both strands act as templates and the new DNA molecules will contain one original strand and one new strand. Let's do our own summary diagram. So let me use the right colors again. So here, this is showing us the results of DNA extracted and centrifuged from bacteria that had been growing in N15. So we're using purple for N15, they have heavier nitrogen in their growth medium. They're using N15 to make their DNA. When extracted and centrifuged, it's heavier DNA. So the band is lower down the centrifuge tube based on the fact that it has greater density. Then that bacteria was transferred to a growth medium containing N14 and allowed to replicate once. So I've separated the original DNA strands as what happens in, in um, DNA replication. And then, let me change my pen color. Because it's now growing in N14, which is available in the growth medium, the new DNA is gonna be synthesizing using N14 in the bases. So you can see that the DNA will consist of one original strand that contained heavier nitrogen or N15 and one newly synthesized strand that contained lighter nitrogen or N14. So when you extract that DNA and centrifuge it, you can see it will be less dense than the DNA 
that contain just N15. It's got intermediate density, so it's a little bit higher up the tube. Now we're gonna go one step further in this diagram, and we're gonna take the bacteria that had been allowed to replicate once in N14, and we're gonna allow it to replicate again in N14 growth medium. So it's gonna separate its DNA, break the hydrogen bonds, separate the two strands, they will act as templates, and then it's gonna build the new strands. So if I separate the DNA strands, Okay, so I've separated those two and I've separated those two. They're going to act as templates to build the new DNA strands. And remember, it's now replicating again in the N14 growth medium. So it's got light nitrogen available to make the new strands of DNA. Light nitrogen was red or N14 was red. Okay. So hopefully you can see now that if I extract this DNA and centrifuge it, I'm going to get a band here, just like I did in the tube above, because I've still got some DNA that consists of one strand containing N15 and one strand containing N14. But this time I'm going to get a second band higher up the tube, nearer to the top, because I've also now got DNA that will contain two strands, both containing N14. So two strands containing N14, it's gonna be less dense. And when centrifuged, the DNA is gonna separate out higher up the tube. So I'm gonna see two bands of two different densities like this. Let's have a look at some exam style questions. Now, this is obviously application, so you will be told a little bit about the investigation, but I think it does help to have some understanding first, right? So there are two isotopes or two different forms of nitrogen. N15 is heavier, it has an extra neutron, and the normal isotope N14 is lighter, it has one less neutron. In an investigation, a culture of bacteria was obtained in which all the nitrogen in the DNA was N15 form. These bacteria, or generation zero, were transferred to a medium containing only the normal isotope N14 and allowed to divide once. A sample of these bacteria, generation one, were then removed. The DNA in the bacteria of generation one was extracted and spun in a high speed centrifuge. The bacteria in the N14 medium were allowed to divide one more time and the DNA was also extracted from these bacteria, generation two, and spun in a high speed centrifuge. Easy question to start with, which part of the DNA contains nitrogen? It's obviously the base or the bases, adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine, they're nitrogenous bases, that's where the nitrogen is being incorporated. Explain why the DNA from generation one is found in this position shown, and this is worth two marks. So this is because the DNA contains one strand containing N15 and one strand containing N14. Or you could say one strand containing heavy nitrogen and one strand containing light nitrogen uh, because originally it was bacteria growing in N15, so it would have had DNA containing N15, but it was transferred and allowed to replicate once in N14. So the new strands of DNA would be made using N14 or light nitrogen. And you can see that this means it is less dense than the DNA from generation zero, which only contained N15. And to get marking point two, we can explain this by saying because DNA replication is semi-conservative. So because both strands act as a template, that means the DNA produced will contain one original strand, which was containing N15 or heavy nitrogen, and one light strand, which was containing N14 or light nitrogen. That's why we've got this intermediate density, if you like. It's less dense than the N15, but it would be more dense than DNA containing only N14.
Now I'm guessing we're now going to have to draw on generation two. Yes, complete the diagram to show the results for generation two. Now we don't have to draw it looking like DNA molecules like we did before. We can literally just show the examiner that there would be a band here because some of the DNA would still consist of one strand of N15 and one strand of N14. So it would have the same density as the DNA in generation one. But we also need to draw a separate band higher up to show the examiner that some of the DNA would now consist of two strands, both containing N14. So it would be less dense and higher up the tube. Now you get two marks for showing two bands and you get another mark if you've got one band at the same height as this band because this contains both N14 and N15. And you get the second mark if your second band is higher up than that first band because this will just contain N14. 14 only and i'll just do the diagram again just to make sure we're happy so we took the dna that was purely n15 we allowed these bacteria to replicate once in n14 so this would represent the dna in generation one but then we let that bacteria replicate again in N14. So I'm separating the DNA strands and I'm building the new strands. So this would represent the DNA in generation two. So you can see you've got two different types of DNA with two different densities. You've got some DNA that has a strand containing heavy nitrogen and light nitrogen. And you've got some DNA that contains light nitrogen only. So when centrifuged, it explains why you're getting this second band higher up the tube. Now, the key takeaways to this, I mean, you might not get a question on this experiment, we don't know. But the key takeaway is that DNA replication is semi-conservative. This is the evidence that supports it, the experimental evidence. And semi-conservative replication means that the DNA produced will contain one original or parent strand and one new or newly synthesized strand. Guys, I hope you found this video useful. As always, let me know in the comments if it's helped, if you've come across any application questions on this particular experiment.